Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the Maybelline Color Tattoo Eye Chrome Liquid Eyeshadows. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks so that you can make the most out of this product. Because if you don't listen to what I have to say or don't take my advice, you might not like these that much. Uh, there is, There are certain things that you should and or shouldn't do to optimize the efficiency of the product. All right, let's start off at the beginning though. There are 10 shades of these. The price range varies, of course, from store to store. I purchased mine at Walmart because I bought all 10 shades and why pay more than I have to? They are $7.94 each at Walmart or you can pay $7.99 each at Target or you can pay $9.99 each at Ulta. Those are the three places that I've seen them so far, but I'm sure that they will be coming to other stores too that carry Maybelline. But so far, those are the only stores I've seen them in. They're not brand brand new. They've been out for at least a couple of months, maybe even, I'd say like two and a half months. Um, I've watched other videos and people talk about the product and they show the colors but they didn't really at least none of the videos that I saw they didn't really talk about precisely application what works what doesn't so I want to make sure I include that in this video the color range is very good everything from light shades to vibrant shades to dark shades I think no matter who you are or what your skin tone is, you will find something that is flattering on you. So good color range. And um, the price is, I think, a little high for what it is because it doesn't look like you get very much product. In the tube, you get 0.11 fluid ounces. So there isn't very much product in here. And I... I think that once you got down the end of the tube, it might be difficult to get all of it out. Um, so that's what it looks like. It comes in one of these tubes, and it is liquid, like I said. Takes about two to three minutes to dry fully, I would say. So it sets up quickly. Now, as far as opacity or non-opacity, uh, some of them are more concentrated pigment than others and you'll see that when I show you the swatches and some when you apply them you might have to put a little more because uh, you know it isn't quite as pigmented alright let's talk about the colors like I said there are 10 and I've done swatches here let me see if I can okay that's that's pretty good the top one here is called Gilded Rose. And I feel like if you have fair to light skin, that's going to be the one that's probably going to be the easiest one for you to just apply. Maybe put a little something in the crease for a contour and you're done and it's going to look really nice. Uh, very pretty, very easy to wear color. So that's Gilded Rose. It's just a really pretty pink. And then the next one is Beige Luster. This is a really nice light neutral color that again I think is gonna look really nice on pretty much anybody. Very complimentary color, very easy to wear. The next one is Khaki Cool and this is like a sort of like a moss green type shade. That is what I am wearing today. And uh, I like this a lot. I think it's perfect for fall. It's not too dark. It's just a nice mid-range mossy green color. They're calling it khaki. And I think they're, they're thinking in terms of like khaki green, like pants and jackets and that sort of thing. This next one is Fool's Gold. This is a very dark very dark, super dark, like antique gold, but it really is, it's got some bronze and green and gold. It's, it's sort of a, 
a multifaceted, super dark color. So I think that would be difficult for um, most people to wear, but if you have dark skin, that would probably be gorgeous on you. So anybody with a deeper skin tone, try out Fool's Gold. I bet it'd be gorgeous on you for fall. The next one is the bronze shade. And let me just double check here. I want to make sure that I told you those names correctly so far. Yeah, I did. Okay, bronze sheen is the next one. And this is pretty much just your typical bronze shade, another shade that is perfect for fall. It's light enough that I think it would go look good on pretty much everybody, but not so light that it's not going to show up. So that's a very good standard color for fall. The next one after that is Electric Emerald. Now, I wore this one the other day, and it is um, a pretty vibrant and deep in color. And it was it ended up being a little bit darker and more vibrant than I really wanted for where I was going and what I was doing. Um, so what I did was, so that I didn't have to do my makeup all over again, I wore a lipstick that sort of, your eyes went to the lipstick instead of the bright green eyeshadow. But if you like really true emerald eyeshadows, which aren't really that easy to find, this is definitely it. It's pretty, it's just, it's bam in your face. And then the next one is Bold Sapphire. And this is kind of almost like a navy blue eyeshadow and pretty dark in color. Um, not as easy to apply or as opaque as I would like it to be, but I'm going to give you some tips in a minute on how to um, make any of these colors work perfectly no matter which one you use. So if you see a color you like, go for it. The next one is called Sharp Purple. This is a super dark, dark purple. So again, would probably be better suited to darker skin tones. So that's sharp purple. The next one is the silver. And it is called Silver Spark. And this is a very light silver. So better suited to light skin tones like myself. And I've used that, but not just by itself. So I'm looking forward to trying that again and just putting that one color all over the lid. And then the last one is Gunmetal. So it's a really, really dark gray. And all these shades are shimmery, glittery, multifaceted to a certain extent. Uh, there are no matte shades in this range. So if you are afraid of shimmer and glitter, then this might not be your thing. None of it is chunky though, or has texture to it. It applies very smoothly on the eye. So you won't feel any grit or you won't have any chunks of fallout falling down on your face. These apply um, smoothly, evenly, for the most part. We'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, no fallout. And once they're on, they're on. They're going nowhere. You will have to remove these with either an oil, like an olive oil or a coconut oil, or an oil-based makeup remover. So make sure you have something like that in the house before you put this on your eyes. Otherwise, if you just use a standard eye makeup remover, it won't come off. <laughs> so these are going nowhere. You can, sometimes with this type of product, it will um, crease as the day goes on or melt or something like that. Have no fear. You can put this on, leave the house, be gone all day, and it's not going to look any different when you come home than when you started, no matter how, what time you come home. So that's a very good thing 
for uh, most people. Nobody wants their eye makeup melting off. All right, tips and tricks. The best advice I can give you if you want to use these for optimum efficiency, don't put an eyeshadow primer on. These work best just putting it on your naked skin. No matter how tempted you are or if you're somebody who's like, oh, I always use an eye primer, I have to use an eye primer. Don't. These are designed in such a way that you don't have to or you shouldn't because if you do, the chemicals in your eye primer are going to interact with these chemicals and they're not going to look as nice. They're not going to stay as well. So just put them on bare skin and you'll be fine and they will last all day and will not move. Uh, another thing, how you apply them. Use the applicator that comes in the tube. When you apply this, apply it straight from the applicator and just dab it, smear it on a little bit at a time and just go across until you get the opacity you want. If it seems like it's not as dark or deep as you want, you can put a little bit more. Uh, you can do it two ways. You can just dab it on and keep dabbing and work your way across your eye until it looks the way you want it to. Or you can do a light layer, let it dry, and then add a second layer. You can either way, it's going to work either way. I've tried it both ways. Um, but use the applicator that comes with it. This applicator is designed to go with this formula. So don't use your fingers like you would maybe with a color tattoo that comes in a jar. And don't use a brush to apply it because no matter what kind of brush you use, it won't go on as nicely as the applicator that comes with it. However, having said that, when you use the applicator and you apply it, there's always going to be maybe a little dab that goes outside the area that you want it to. So what I did, or what I do, is I take a small pencil brush. This one is from Zoeva, but any small pencil brush that you have, and after you apply it, I just go right on the edges and just kind of smooth out the very, very edge or any mistake that you've made where you've gone a little bit beyond the area that you want and just kind of blend it out. You have to work quickly because these dry very fast. So you want to apply this and blend the edges before it dries. So you only have like maybe two and a half minutes, um, depending on how much product you put on. Of course, the more product you put on, the longer it's going to take to dry. But if you just do like one layer and use the opacity that you want, that's what I would do. Okay, um, the only other thing that I want to tell you about is when these products first launched, did anybody see the print ad that Maybelline did. It was the model Emily D. Donato, who um, is one of Maybelline's models, and they did like a rainbow of colors across her eyes. It was stunning. That is what sold me on them and got me curious about them in the first place. So I immediately wanted to try that first thing, and I don't know who the makeup artist was that did that look or how they did it, but from what I can see, I haven't figured out a way yet to use multiple colors on the eyelid to do that rainbow effect. I'm not sure how they did it or what technique they used, but I haven't been able to duplicate that, that rainbow look. And I was so disappointed because I just thought it was stunning and beautiful. And kudos to whoever the makeup artist is, makeup artist is that did that because it was just one of the most beautiful eye looks I've ever seen. So I have tried to um, do that and wasn't able to. So if you are thinking that you want to do multiple colors of these to do a, a look, I find that really the easiest way and the best finished look that you're going to come up with is just pick a color put it on the lids and then what I have been doing is just using a contour product in the crease 
and just doing it that way. I mean, you might be more talented than I am, and you might be able to use multiple colors to come up with a, a multicolored look, but uh, I haven't had any look with that myself. I haven't had any luck with that myself. So that's it, you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye.